So Jason Cecil, do you have any other words of wisdom or thoughts about your how your last month and a half have gone? I'm just looking forward to trying to absorb it some more. You know, there's a lot still to work through and I'm excited about it. So one of the things I wanted to ask you so that everybody could understand is how you found HVAC 2O. So I was, um, you know, I'm, I'm coming from a sales background. It's another technical background, but I have learned that as I learned a little bit more on the technical side, just having an understanding of it, of refrigeration, how it works and, and airflow because airflow is such a common issue that it has helped me get more sales having some of that knowledge and being able to test static pressure and things like that. And so I was also looking for a way to increase my average sale and sell better equipment because I mean, Ronnie already sold more five stage this month than I sold all last year. So, um, and just, you know, in just eight days or whatever. But for me, so I, so I was went out and was looking at the blower door because I felt like that would build more value and I could get more of the higher end quality. Cause there was a company here that has since gone out of business, but they used to do a blower door on every lead and they would sell high quality equipment every time that they sold something, but apparently it wasn't enough to uh, stay in business, but, but it was intriguing to me. So anyway, I purchased a blower door and I was just looking at the different videos and found Nate and, and a lot of his videos. And then I found his book and I ordered the book and I read the book and I was encouraged by my, my my son to get on LinkedIn and and um, get participate in in that. And all of a sudden, Nate invited me to this meeting, and I was like, "What are these guys even talking about?" And and then I was I was I was messaging everybody I could, saying, "Hey, how do I get in on this?" And sounds like greedy. You know, Yep. How do I get in? How do I get in? So next thing I know, I'm on the phone with uh, Ted for hours while he's driving from New York to Florida. So, so anyway, so this this helped me find exactly what I was looking for as far as a means to be able to explain why better equipment is an option that you should look at. And that's what uh, I've done so far. So I've, I've taken the second onboarding, looked at that, and now I've started the, um, the third. And it looks like in the third, there is a lot of content in that. So right, going to take some time. So, so the first onboarding was pretty easy. Yep. How long did it take you? About an hour. Okay. For me. And you did the first onboarding before you even did your first quiz, right? Yes. And then you started sending the comfort quiz out. Yep. And then you leaned into doing the whole thing at a, vi at a couple of visits, even though it was uncomfortable. Right. And then after after the second time, it wasn't uncomfortable anymore. Right. And then from there, you um, got very comfortable with it and started. Well, so you got off on a tangent sort of the way Reedy did is because you thought that it was a quoting software. And so you were trying to build your templates to quote instead of building the templates to help people understand budget. Right. And then from there, you started leaning into the Sandler 
And one of the things that we discovered from your leaning into can't ride a bike and Sandler at, in home sales is that everybody should really just get the, get the, what's it called? Quintessential Sandler. Yeah, the ultimate Sandler tapes where he's actually talking. The ultimate Sandler tapes. Everybody should just go straight to the ultimate Sandler tapes. And then later, if they want to fill in, can't ride, well, they should add can't ride a bike. Right. Um, and then from there, um, you started thinking of ways to improve the order of the free quote by changing um, how you present the smiley faces so that it the equipment is going to go after mm -hmm. the install so that people can make their install choices first. See, I, well, I think the biggest difference between what Jason was doing before HVAC 20 and what he's doing now is building a relationship with the person he's selling or the people if it's a three leg stool the people that he's selling the product to the whole he's listening more than he's talking he's which he already did because he had a 6200 right coming in but, so, but I mean, now he's tying it into pain right so i really don't know how to scale that because at a at a salesperson level because i mean maybe they will maybe they won't i don't know but well so one from, of the things that we were talking about today actually and you sort of leaning into that jason i think is originally we were thinking maybe we would be targeting those guys who are doing three, four, five thousand revenue per per lead. Mm -hmm. But the problem with those guys is they're doing crappy for a reason. Yeah. And so maybe we should instead be trying to take the cream of the crop off of off of this too. Because I mean I originally was like, well if you're at sixty two hundred, how much can we improve it? Well over the last month, Jason's done 11,100. But the huge so he, difference in that is his closing ratio is up. Hugely, right? Well, and job size. Time. Job size job, and closing ratio. Job size is, is up, but closing ratio is... Through the roof. Yes. yes. Both. So both. that makes your revenue per lead. I mean, it's it's a ratio there so yep yep so close it and i don't think it's it's just the it's the reputation that he's building with the homeowners that is selling these jobs through the oh right because they because he comes in and the people are like oh here's a guy actually asking me questions about how i feel and it gives the perception of he knows what he's doing and maybe he does maybe he doesn't but at least he's trying to to understand these things yeah and and that's what is huge and you can at that point when you understand things and you can enunciate them to the people that you're talking to that you're selling something to then it's huge because you can i mean you could build your quote to be nothing but the best stuff at that point, because they're not going to buy from anybody else. They're right. sold. They're sold. So you could be, you can still give them the option of single stage, but they're not going to buy that unless you recommend it. Once you've built that rep, rep is that the word? With that repertoire? Person. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, once you've built that confidence with them then it's really well and people are people are like well this is a lot more money but i'd rather spend it with you and right. and then also they're like and it's not apples to apples right and then and then the other move that he's making is he's like well so we built your perfect specification if you want to call those people back and have them bid to this 
you know, they're not going to call them back. Because <laughs> they're not going to call them back. And even if and they we'll, did. They, right. They'd be screwed. Oh, he, he's, he's having connection problems. So, but, uh, so the other interesting thing is, is where Jason is people pull permits. And so right. what, what the sales managers do is they pull permits on all the leads their guys have run so they can see who beat them at the sale. And what's going to end up happening is all of these jobs that, that Jason, Jason's beating the other guys out of these sales, they're going to be like, so this guy beat you, but the job's four or $5,000 bigger. Right. And, yeah. And, and that's, and, and he's going to probably show a whole bunch of those and he's going to have a lot of salespeople pulling their hair out. Well, I mean, I foresee that he's probably going to go to work for a company that can provide him with four or 500 leads. If he's working in the Charlotte area, then. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would think that I his mean, company is going to want to want to throttle up pretty quickly to keep him. Yeah. Cause, cause it might, it might be hard, but I, I don't know. That's, that's, yeah, between I mean, that's Jason and his employer. Right. Which, but he still has to feel comfortable with what he's, selling at the kitchen table as well so if he feels comfortable with the company to provide the service that he's selling right then i would suggest staying there versus going to somebody that's just going to go slam stuff in and i, I went to a, a company job. that sold carrier and i got to know how amazing the infinity equipment was and all the things it would do the three speed that you a totally programmable fan programmable right. by the homeowner right? and then measuring static pressure and all the rest of that stuff so that I could hold the installers to account. Mm -hmm. And and then my company wanted me to start selling good. And I just wouldn't, uh, I'd be like, how about no? Right. You know, and he'd be mad. And I like, yeah. So all of those assholes are selling six, $7,000 jobs. And I'm selling these 20,000 jobs. Cause this was 2009. Remember? Right. And what size job do you want? Yeah, it's all the same money at the end of the day. I mean, you want the big money jobs. That's just where, where yeah. it goes. You can do better work. Better work. Yeah. Everybody wants you spend to spend. I mean, you spend more time on one job and do it right versus slamming in a few jobs for the same amount of money, but you're not providing a good service. Right, right. It's not you can't feel good about yourself. You can't, you, you can't. Right. Like you see your client in the grocery store instead of saying hi and asking how they're doing, you walk the other way. Right. I mean, who wants to have relationships like that? Not me. Not me either. <laughs> well, guys, thank you. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. I was really worried. Not getting anybody using the free quote process, not having some guinea pigs to really figure out how to make this work. I think you've got it. You just got to get people signed up and got to get people it. signed up and using it. It's a, the, and, and right now, the way it's positioned, it's really only going to appeal to people with ambition. Yeah. And, and so that's really, we should continue with that. We shouldn't be trying Which to bottom feed. No. The stupidest of the stupid in the HVAC field. No. We, we got to go after the all, all the guys that we've got here are smart guys and they're fun right. and they know and they know they're they got chops. And I mean, so Jason is the first salesperson, not right. tech. And, you know, he, he was off the top. We pull. He's the cream. So I guess what yep. we got to do is start going after the cream instead of going yep. for the middle. I mean. I mean, that's where you started, like comfort consults, and that's where we doors. started comfort consults. All the top guys, the the mediocre guys, couldn't stick. 